Hi, I'm Dr. Major Vimal Raj. I'm a cardiothoracic radiologist from Bangalore, India, working in Narayana Hridayalaya Hospital. In this scenario of emergency relating to COVID or coronavirus, I would like to present this summary on chest imaging relating to COVID-19 and what should we do as a pulmonologist or a radiologist or a medical physician who is looking after these patients primarily focused on imaging. I want to review some major publications that are out there and also critically review some of the recommendations which have come out from societies. Finally, I would like to put in a word of what might be best for India and also I have collated some images which will be useful as a learning point for the radiologists out there. Well, the main question that I would like us all to be clear at the end of this presentation is what does COVID-19 look like on a chest imaging, especially on a chest CT? The second thing is, which a lot of people have started asking us is, can we use CT imaging as a screening tool for testing COVID? Is that something which is sensible for us or not? We are going to review these two points critically in the next 10 to 15 minutes. Well, I bring to you the first paper which came out from China, which basically told us about a different patterns of imaging in 90 patients who were proven to have COVID-19 with RT-PCR testing. And they also looked at the longitudinal uh, progression of these patients as to when they admitted and when they discharged and through their admission, what was the different imaging patterns of this. They looked at the distribution of the lung abnormalities. They also spoke about a severity scoring of the lung parenchyma and looked at what was the imaging appearances at the time of discharge. They divided the patterns into ground glass, consolidation, reticular and a mixed pattern. And again, the ground glass was further divided into simple ground glass or ground glass associated with interlobular septae or intralobular septal thickening like a crazy paving or ground glass which was overlying areas of fibrosis. These were the different patterns that they had spoken about. Now you can see a pure ground glass, ground glass with some interlobular septal thickening and some crazy paving appearances and areas of fibrosis with ground glass overlying within that. They also described cases like areas of consolidation, areas of just pure reticulation and then a mixed pattern where you were seeing ground glass as well as consolidation in these patients. What was very interesting to find was that the at presentation about four out of the 90 patients did not have any uh, symptoms as in the about 40 percent of them had a normal CT scan while two of them had abnormal changes but as the time progressed ground glass became the most predominant pattern by sixth to eleventh day when the disease started to clearly become evident on the CT scan and as the progression in the hospital stay happened, the mixed pattern also started contributing to this. And about 94% of patients, although fit for discharge, still had an abnormal CT scan. The other thing that they did show was within the ground glass pattern, whenever there was an abnormality, the simple ground glass seemed to be the most common pattern while there were areas of fibrosis with ground glass as well as some crazy paving which is seen in these green images. Bilateral involvement was the most common pattern which has been described with many other articles. Same was the case with a subpleural or peripheral involvement in these cases. Some of the images that they showed, this is one patient, a 35-year-old female, who got discharged on day 17 and what we can see is the different patterns that this patient went through where you could see a pure ground glass to begin with then it gets worse more so and then it starts to get better where the left lung changes are getting uh, much better than before in this patient. 
A different patient who presented with a crazy paving pattern on day three and then you can see the bilateral involvement became more obvious and then again the disease progressed before it started to get better. Again bilateral involvement is seen ground glass is the most predominant feature. A different female who got discharged on day 30 you can see peripheral bilateral involvement with more of ground glass changes in these patients with some architectural distortion that we can see and then things getting better towards the time of discharge in this patient. This brings in to the second paper which I wanted to discuss and this second paper was a retrospective review of 101 cases, a multi-center study which basically looked at CT findings in comparison with the clinical conditions and they looked at the patterns and distribution of disease and also tried to see if clinical emergency patients whether they had any different pattern on imaging compared to the ones who did not have that bad a clinical presentation. Fever was the most common symptom at the onset in this group of patients. They saw the predominantly the same pattern of ground glass opacities or a mixed pattern in these patients, distribution being peripheral and bilateral like in other paper. What was new in this was a description of vascular enlargement in the lesion which was seen in about 70% of cases. Emergency patients were older but the pattern of disease was no different between patients who were sick versus the patients who were not that sick. However, if you looked at the severity scoring, as in the extent of involvement was much severe in people who had a emergency group or who had severe disease. So more the lung involvement was more in patients with severe disease. Again, some of the images that they showed this, I would like to point out to a couple of these images where you can see the vessel at the lesion and adjoining the lesion is prominent which has been described as the vascular thickening in these papers when we looked at. Otherwise again peripheral lower low predominant ground glass changes are more common in this. This was one patient who had severe disease and again when we are looking at it the extent of involvement is much more than what we have seen so far in keeping with clinical severity of this patient. So Summary one of my talk is that there is a definitive pattern of COVID-19 on chest CT. You get to see ground glass with or without consolidation as a mixed pattern. There is bilateral involvement and there is peripheral distribution. Plural issues are unlikely and extensive involvement may match with the severity of the disease. That brings us to paper three which basically looked at one of the most important things which I feel uh, we all need to be careful of is can a radiologist on chest CT differentiate COVID from other viral pneumonias? This was a study between US and uh, Chinese uh, radiologists whereby 219 positive COVID cases were combined with 205 positive viral pneumonia patients. The Chinese radiologist saw all these cases, while U.S. radiologists saw 58 cases which were age and sex matched. Any patient who had a normal CT was excluded or anyone with proven bacterial infection was also excluded. What they came up was that the sensitivity of Chinese radiologists was around 72 to 94 percent, very similar to that of the U.S. radiologist. However, the specificity of the Chinese radiologist was as variable as 24% to 94%. This is one issue which I think we need to be very careful about. The US radiologists seem to have a higher specificity but they did not look at all the cases. They also confirmed that plural involvement is less likely, lymph nodes are not often seen and central disease is also not something very common. In conclusion, however, they quote that the CT findings have high specificity but poor sensitivity, but I don't think the numbers that they have provided 
justifies this statement that has been made. Some learning points here. Uh, these two patients were viral pneumonias, which was non-COVID, but most of the radiologists call them COVID patterns. So we need to be careful about this. These are different patients who had COVID, but the radiologists were not very convinced or did not think of this as COVID. So extensive ground glass involvement that you can see, peripheral ground glass with some reverse halo which is settling in here, bilateral involvement, again patchy area of ground glass which is very very non-specific. This also led to another paper which is uh, bringing to our second question that we have in mind whereby these authors looked at chest CT in relation with RT-PCR testing in COVID-19 patients in China. They wanted to look at the diagnostic value and the consistency of chest CT in comparison to RT-PCR. 1,014 patients who had both RT-PCR and chest CT were included in this study. And what they found was 580 patients amongst the 1,014 had both positive RT-PCR and a CT. 308 patients, however, had a positive CT but negative RT-PCRs. And 21 patients with positive RT-PCR had a negative CT and 105 patients had both the test negative. So this led to a sensitivity of 97%, a very low specificity of 25%, and an accuracy of 68%, with one important point here, which would be the negative predictive value of around 83%. Now, when we look at the 308 who had a positive CT, but RT-PCR was negative, about 48% of them were clinically thought to be very highly likely to have COVID and 33% were thought probable to have COVID clinically. So these patients are a decent number who may still require quarantine or who may still require treatment. Now, many patients had a retest in this group as part of their disease progression in the hospital. 15 patients who moved from a negative PCR towards the positive PCR at a later date actually had 14 CTs which were positive initially as well. So CT was actually picking up these abnormalities in these patients who later on turned to be RT-PCR positive. That brings us to the last few slides which is about recommendations from societies. There are two prominent societies which I have taken up. Uh, I have ignored some of the uh, societies uh, for this particular talk, but I would like to concentrate on the recommendations which have come from the BSTI, the British Society of Thoracic Imaging, and the American College of Radiology. One, what is important is the ACR had come up with a guidelines or recommendation bit earlier in the March, which then got updated about two to three days ago in on 22nd of March. Now, just as a summary of what is RT-PCR, it's a throat swab. The time to the result is variable depending on which part of the world you are in. The test is also not that easily available in some parts of the world. And uh, there are newer kits coming up which may change things, but as things stands, the sensitivity is very low, about 60 to 70 percent. And many patients who are negative on the first go could be in early stage of disease because of the low viral load. They often require a second test before we can rule out COVID-19 in them. So this has led to the question of can something else replace RT-PCR as a screening tool in these patients. Now, the recommendations from the uh, British Society says that there is no role of CT in diagnosis of COVID unless patient is very ill or PCR test is not available. Now, ACR early on in March basically said CT is not good for screening or as a first-line test for COVID-19. However, on 22nd of March, they quote, 
as an interim measure until widespread testing is available, people can use it to take informed decisions. And they also highlight that, remember that normal CT does not mean we should not quarantine the patients because they still may have COVID as we had seen in the last paper. So this brings in a very pertinent point whereby in geographical areas where RT-PCR testing is not that easily accessible or not that reliable because of the initial negative test, CT chest should be, in my personal opinion, used as a screening tool because if it is abnormal, it gives you a good confidence to quarantine these patients and maybe start them on therapy much earlier in disease rather than having to wait for another two days or three days to get the test redone for it to be positive or negative. So if the CT chest findings are positive, it is definitely helpful. If the CT chest findings are negative, then of course, these patients would be advised social distancing, probably home isolation, and a repeat RT-PCR testing. Now, the British Society also came up with uh, CT patterns, and they said there are some patterns which are classical COVID, whereby you've got lower low predominant peripheral disease, and there are multiple areas of crazy paving, almost 100% confidence for COVID compared to something which is low bar in pneumonia or cavitating infections or tree in butt pattern where there is a 70% confidence that it is not COVID but an alternative disease. So based on this, they also came up with this uh, flow chart whereby chest x-ray gets done for every patient, which is absolutely fine, but the clinical assessment and labs are done before. Patients who are seriously ill if the chest x-ray is uncertain or normal, a CT scan is useful in these patients. And if CT scan shows abnormality, then you can easily isolate the patient, whether if it's a definitive or probable pattern. If it's an indeterminate pattern, then it has to be a combined decision with that. But they do say that patients who are stable, there is no role of CT. I beg to differ about that especially if you do not have an RT-PCR testing kit uh, as reliable uh, and available to you readily. So, in summary, CT has a high sensitivity, so it will pick up more diseases, but has low specificity, wherein other viral pneumonias may also be confused as COVID-19, but at this critical stage, we are better off being false positives rather than false negative studies. This sensitivity and specificity will vary significantly based on the experience of the radiologists and I hope some of the images that I have shown you and some of the papers that I have pointed out may improve your diagnostic confidence and will give you an idea of what to look for. I believe CT is not an alternative for RT-PCR but it can be used as a supplemental test, especially where the reliability or availability of RT-PCR is not great. The pattern that we all need to remember is the ground glass to mixed pattern, peripheral involvement, bilateral lung diseases is more common. When you start seeing plural involvement, it is likely that it is not a COVID-19. So, uh, dear colleagues, I wish all of us uh, good luck in fighting this disease and I hope I have uh, given a good summary for you all to help in your triaging and further management of these patients. Thank you very much and please do subscribe to the channel so I can keep posting some of these videos as we go along.